<laughs> Welcome, and it's time for our final session here. And who else to do it with than Mary? But let's introduce who we have with us here. You've already seen her take the stage with some fine poetry there. She's proud of every one of you and us, and we're proud of her too. Yeah. Wana Wana, Wana Wong, is in the studio here with us. She's an extraordinary poet. She's a host and a host and a host of the most. Um, she's done it all when it comes to media. And right now, coming off of her sold-out session for 2020, Which, by the way, is spelled S-O-U-L-D. Is that what yeah. it is? Yeah. Wana, well, first of all, welcome. <laughs> Thank welcome. you. It didn't click. <laughs> yes. So, so, sold out of the soul. Yes. Nice. S-O-U-L-E-D, yeah. That's poetic. Yeah. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Now, Grant, good to great stuff you just thank done. You. Uh, thank uh, you for having me. Uh, thank you for coming so on good the to holiday. Have you here. Yeah. Yes. Merry Christmas, guys. Merry thank Christmas. you very much. There are so many sides to you that I've, I've been trying to, just like a banana, I've been trying to figure out, okay, what layer first? Which one should I <laughs> know? But you know what? Unlike the usual, I'm going to take yes. it from now, then okay. go to the past, the past okay? Yes. And uh, talking about now. Yeah. Something that I found intriguing was the comfort food workshop you did oh, yes. recently. And I, I, I was, I, I'm very particular about food. I, I'm not quite a foodie, but I like good food. Yes. And I like things that have to do with food. Yeah. In fact, I always fancy that sometime whenever I do a solo TV show, it will definitely be centered around food because mm -hmm. that's how passionate I am about it. So when I saw the comfort food workshop, I was interested. Yes. And then I saw it had to do with using food to elicit memories. Please, please tell us more about mm. it. So Comfort Food, um, the workshop came out of the pandemic. So we're in COVID and we weren't doing anything else. And I was just cooking a lot. I like food in general. Yeah. But, but I literally was just cooking every day, mm. turning my dinners into semi-gourmet meals mm -hmm. and taking pictures because we weren't doing anything else. Um, but I think what was happening was I was taking cooking, taking photos, and writing stories about the food. So it wasn't, the food would be, I found, was a portal into different stories. Mm. Um, and so this idea of, like, a workshop came about because I found that I was, I also wrote a lot of poems around food or using food like, as an analogy into something bigger. Um, so, yeah, so in, in, for me, I think what I also realized, and I sort of said it to... Peel open, mm. going with the banana. <laughs> <laughs> peel, you know, starting to peel these layers. And one of the things for me was that food engages all your senses. It engages so touch, easy. sight, smell, yeah. texture, all of all, all your senses. Yeah. Taste, most yeah, taste as well. So it it, 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 it uses or everything. Everything. And understanding the language of that is poetic. Mm. So being able to use you use all of the senses to be able to write poetry. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was like I wanted to use food as a way, it was a thing that connected us all as human mm. beings as well. And using food as this way into a portal, into remembering stories, and then these stories will lead to other things, um, lead to people, lead to issues, lead to feelings mm -hmm. as well. And then you can create new poems or new stories. It started wow. off as a poetry workshop. Now I call it a storytelling workshop yeah. because I teach it to different kinds of people. People who make films, who write what are, any kind of storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, it's just... And then there's do Dirty yourself. Laundry. That yes. one as yeah. well. Yes. And, and that's not all. That's not the only avenue with which you use to express your poetry. You also use your body as yes. well. I know that in the past you had so many very, very good-looking Bodesque pictures that you put out there in, <laughs> in the public. One I has actually... she's. Yeah. What was that about? That was part of poetry, wasn't it? I, I guess, yeah, I guess um, for me, it's all storytelling, right? And I tell stories about everything, both the, um, the comfortable and the deeply uncomfortable. And mm. I like to talk about uncomfortable. Which was it for you at that time? Comfortable or deeply uncomfortable? It wasn't uncomfortable. It was very comfortable. Okay. Um, and I think, I guess it was just exploring. I think with photography, I was working with a, I was working with a photographer called Laki Ogubanwu. Okay. So it was very interesting to just work on that project. It was his project, really, and mm -hmm. then he invited me to participate in it. Mm -hmm. And then luckily, we just really, I really love the pictures as well, so I used one of it for my, ab my album cover. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so it was just a lot of fun. And there's, as I said, I, I pretty much live in poetry, so mm. I see everything as poetic in some way. How do people receive it, though, with a family, or friends, yeah. or church? Because it's one thing for people who yeah. are just yeah. looking at it, then yeah. it's one thing mm -hmm. for people who you know mm. and how they reacted to it. My family is, I think my family just knows who I am, so I don't ever have any issues with my family about anything. But no, I think usually, with, typically with Nigerians, it's always the same, oh my God, you are so brave, you are so courageous. Yeah. And I think my question was always, but if it was a smaller body, it would make no difference to mm. you. Just walk past it, I'm like, oh my God, so cute. But then why is my body um, strange? Or why is my body brave? 
So I'm always interested in people asking themselves these questions and questioning their own perceptions as well. Mm. Makes me wonder what you make of Lizzo. <laughs> Lizzo's brave. Lizzo's brave. I don't she's think active. she's brave. I think she's being she's being she's living. Being out. She's just living. She's yeah. just people are living. People are living in different kinds of bodies every day. Mm. Why do certain bodies have to be brave mm -hmm. by just doing normal things? Mm. Yeah. And so yeah. Uh, that I I would like to yeah just <laughs> appear the one day. I'm talking about me now. My, I've yeah. never been comfortable, and I'm I'm saying I've never been comfortable. I grew up mm. a skinny kid, and okay. I mean absolutely skinny. And currently, yeah. my body is very odd because sometimes it's it's I've got a broad chest and skinny arms. You're gorgeous. I don't know oh, what you're talking about. Again. Okay, he wants to hear it again. You are a gorgeous specimen of a man. What is the problem? There Can you is. turn that into poetry, please? <laughs> keep going, keep, keep going, keep going. We, we want that. We'll be here all day, we'll be here all day. In any case, um, so your poetry is very unique, I say. Mm. Um, from five years ago, ten years ago, actually. I've, been, I've, yeah, been, I've known you for a very yeah, long exactly. time. Yeah, exactly, like ten years ago. And I've seen you perform. And I know that we always used to visit uh, Bogoberry. Yes. It was, it was fantastic. Yeah. Now, after COVID, for me, it seems like... The poetic, scene, the poetic, the poetry scene changed a bit. Mm -hmm. um, poetry is uh, much more, much more advocative. It's, it's a bit aggressive. I don't mm -hmm. know okay. if you agree with me. Um, why is that? What's what's happening here? Okay, so I, I think I, I mean I completely understand what you mean. Mm -hmm. I think so. There's a there's a whole new generation of of poets, of younger poets, and I think a lot of the time, you know, when you're when you're when you're coming up in something and finding your way. Part of it is copying sometimes or doing things that you think um, is going to get you noticed. Mm. So, you know, some people feel like, okay, a certain kind of poetry is what's going to get attention paid to them. Um, you know, you have your, you probably see your friends and maybe they did this particular kind of poem and they have lots of views on Instagram or on TikTok. And then the assumption is, ah, this is what I need to do. So I think it's part of what I like to call kind of coming of age and growing pains um, in that regard. Mm -hmm. and, and so as a result, you, you will find a lot of people doing things because they seem to be trendy. But, you know, as you grow, you always find your voice. Um, I remember when, when I was coming up and sort of my own generation of poets were coming up mm -hmm. because a lot of our own spoken word was very influenced by America, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. that was where we were. So people still had slight American twangs yeah. to when they were yeah. reciting. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and then you, you grow out of it because mm -hmm. you feel like, okay, is this how it's supposed to be? And then you start to discover Can't yourself you as well. Anti localize it and all Yes, yeah. yeah. You just have to find yourself, I think. So, referring to the banana again. Yes. Yes, we've, we've been talking so much about I do love poetry. bananas too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, I don't. Really? <laughs> yeah, oh. like one of those weird people oh, okay. don't like bananas. But referring to the banana again, yeah. another layer. Yes. We, we've, we've talked so much about poetry, but then there's you as the... TV, radio show host, mm -hmm. like you've, you've been around the block in media. Mm -hmm. How do you marry all of these things together? So I consider it all storytelling. Mm. Mm. That's what I tell people. I think, I think we're all tell I'm telling stories, right? I'm telling stories, but I'm just telling them in different mediums. So whether I'm on television, I'm helping to tell a story. Mm -hmm. So you guys on TV every day, you're helping, you're using storytelling to bring all of this information to the audience. Mm -hmm. um, on radio, it's the same thing as well. So I'm kind of a... I'm, I'm a curator of, of stories and experiences, mm. right? And so I'm just helping to arrange all of those things. And so the same way in writing, I'm, I've, I work, I've worked as a journalist as well, and I'm writing, and again, it's the same thing. You're interviewing people, you're bringing into a feature mm -hmm. piece. So for me, it's all different kinds of forms of storytelling, um, but just in different mediums. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes different, I, I always say that, you know, the subject determines the medium. So there, there are ideas that come to me and they probably would make a better documentary, or mm -hmm. they make a better radio show. Mm. Um, sometimes because of the restrictive access where people don't want to show their faces, so it's probably easier for that to be a radio program or a radio documentary. Um, and something is, might be more interesting to explore as a poem because it probably allows me for more complexity yeah. in there. So mm. that's, I think that's how I view it. So I view it all as one and the same. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So it's oh. just different ways to express yourself. Absolutely. Wow, that's... Wow. That's, I was underwater, was it? Yeah, so yeah. I spent like eight... We spent about eight hours just being underwater, in and out of water, where carrying waves. My, I was in pain by the time wow. I was done. Look at that. Wow. Let's talk about your three albums. You've got three yes. albums out. Yes. yes uh, uh, and before we came back, I was asking, um, where does it sell the most? I want to know this because yeah. I know that Nigerians love poetry. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm not too sure whether we absolutely we appreciate enough to pay for it. Oh, we do, we do. Um, I don't. So unfortunately, my where you know on the platform where I you know dis distribute my 
um, poetry albums. I don't have the data of the places necessarily, but yeah, it's always from all over the world. The UK, the US, Canada, Nigeria, a lot of, the, a lot of Nigerians that listen to poetry, um, particularly lots of young people. Even I even meet older people who are like, oh, I listen to your album. So I'm always, these days I allow myself to be surprised because there are even people who I would think would just never be interested in, in that sort of thing. And they're like, I listen to your album. I say, ah, you listen to the whole album. <laughs> wow, you know? So I'm always quite surprised, but yeah, people, I think, I, I think particularly even with Nigerians, I think we underestimate our, I don't want to say our taste, mm -hmm. because that's, I feel, I, I get very annoyed with how people always go, Nigerians don't do this, yeah. Nigerians are not you interested in this, lot. and we're just human beings who are curious, mm -hmm. once something is put in our face, we're curious and we ex explore and we, we check it out, so. Mm -hmm. I think we're curious, curious people. Are you a pain writer, joy writer, sad writer? Where does your inspiration come inspiration from? Inspiration comes from everything. I, I dare say, I, I was actually going to even answer that question yeah. for you. Everything. You're wet. Why are you asking? <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to my work, you know that there is heavy sadness, there's heavy melancholy, there's heavy beauty and mm -hmm. joy. I write about food and joyful things. Mm -hmm. I write about play. Um, I write about healing, I, I write about things I call reimagination, and I write about, you know, very traumatic incidences as well. So well. have you begun work on your fourth album now? Yes, I started writing it, so, yeah. So it's, um, I'm almost done, so I think I'm halfway through the writing. Fantastic. Um, and then next year we'll, we'll, we'll be able Wanna Wanna? We have a title already, by the way. Wanna Bong? Nice. Which one should we call you? It's wanna Wanna, Wanna Uda Bang, anyone it's, you want to call. It's a fantastic way to actually end today's show, you on here, especially after that piece and getting to pick your brain and talk to you about poetry in Nigeria. Thank you very much for making out, especially on a holiday. We appreciate that. I mean, that. what better way to spend time with people than yeah. a holiday? Yeah. Have you met Winfrey, by the way? Hi, um, Winfrey. We're, we're wondering whether you Winfrey, could... Winfrey, you're so gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank Can I you make poetry out of what she you like? <laughs> Allow me speak. Okay, please. Sorry, now this. Thank you. Beautiful performance, beautiful interview, beautiful personality. I love your energy, and I think it's amazing. I'm definitely going to look, look at... Look for all your albums because I love poetry myself, so I'm definitely going to listen to all of them. Be sure. <laughs> Be rest assured. Yeah. <laughs> and well, we, we will get that um, poetry on We Priest Love. Yes, we will get that poetry. Yeah, <laughs> please, let's, okay? Wanna thank you for joining us. Thank you so thank much. Thank you to everybody out there who chose to, well, keep their screens on us here today for the holidays. There's still plenty coming your way through tomorrow up until the end of the year. We're gonna be taking a, t well, a look at a review of 2023 as we usher in a brand new one for 2024. Yeah. Thank you very much. Do remember now, you can always check us out on YouTube and make sure you have that notification button clicked so you can get all the notifications as soon as the content drops. Thank you so much for your time. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.